Hey guys, it's Jim with Crawfordology. We've got a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about Joe Rogan, unemployment, Amazon J.C. Penny deal, and have you heard what Gavin Newsom has for all you hardworking first responders in California? Stay tuned. <laughs> Hey guys, you know, in times like these, when it, it, we, we, I was reading earlier some comments uh, from, from a previous show, and somebody said, hey, the guys who go to the range who look good are the guys you stay away from. Well, you don't have to look bad to be bad. Let me just say that, right? You can actually look cool and be cool if you visit our friends at ThreatWorks and get some customization done to your firearm. So call Justin or Nick and see what uh, see what they can do for you. I know they're going to have you looking right, and pretty soon we've got some 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 surprises coming. Pretty soon we're going to be able to make you bad. So we look forward to seeing you soon. Hey, listen, um, for those of you who have not heard this yet, Governor Newsom in California has a great plan, and I know everybody's going to support this. Everybody's going to be a supporter of this idea. But uh, Newsom wants to take, and the first people who are going to be laid off are going to be first responders. He's making sure that the fine people of California prioritize. I mean, and, and I'm sure all of you agree with this. His prioritization says, we're going to keep the guys who kind of take care of the, the homeless people down in San Francisco. And you remember a few years ago, they, they got these special teams of people who go clean up human feces off the sidewalk because they didn't want to why would you prosecute somebody for you know going to the bathroom on the sidewalk that's ridiculous it's the only place they can go it's the city so what's the logical thing to do well the logical thing to do of course is to create a poop squad so the poop squad is going to be able to keep their job but now here's the thing californians so beware of this your governor has come up with a great plan he's going to make sure that first responders so your law enforcement guys, your firemen, your life squad ambulance workers, they're out. They're out. But we're going to keep all these special services, you know, all the feel-good stuff that makes you feel really nice. And this is all part of his plea for federal aid. And, and he's just saying, hey, you know, it's going to be those guys first. Now, positioning for an argument, positioning for uh, a, a, a little bit of a negotiation, we understand. But come on, Governor, are you really going to keep the rest of the waste, fraud, and abuse in California, the, the, the land of the fruits and nuts? You're going to keep all of those folks before you, uh, you retain your infrastructure, your kind of critical resources. Who's going who's gonna to keep law and order? Who's going to put out the fires? Who's going to come when you press 911? I don't think it's going to be the poop squad. I, I mean, seriously. There, there have got to be some, some folks around him somewhere who say, hey, man, that's, that's not a good way to go about this. I don't think we can have California, Californians without critical infrastructure. So these states, and we're going to start to see this more and more, these states that are under pressure now after COVID because their revenues are going to be down. Look, California has been a giant drain People have been leaving. We've, we've seen recently, um, in fact, we're going to talk about Joe Rogan saying that he's going he's gonna to leave California if things don't get better. Uh, we see Elon Musk earlier in this week talking about Tesla leaving. Uh, th there's hardly any big businesses in terms of manufacturers left in, in California, and many of their wealthy individuals have left because the taxes are so high, you can't afford to be there. Um, there's not th there's not a reasonableness that uh, that exists in Sacramento that protects folks from just having having their wealth. You could work your whole life, and suddenly the state's going to come in and strip it all away. So, hey, if you were thinking about California, don't do it. Don't do it. Not not till this is over. Not till California comes back to normalcy, or it finally fractures and falls off or separates into its own country. Hey, so <clears throat> the the unemployment issue, of course, is driving some of this for, for California uh, and Californians because we see taxes not being paid. 
Uh, people don't have money in their pockets to go to the restaurants and, and spend money you know, at the businesses, which will generate tax revenue that will come back to the state. But have you seen <laughs> this? Let's, let's go to the clip. But I said I, I don't care if they lay me off either because I told, I told Bill that if they move my desk one more time, then, then, I, then I'm quitting. I'm going to quit. And, and I told Dom, too, because they've moved my desk four times already this year, and I used to be over by the window and I could see the squirrels and they were married but then they switched from the swing line to the Boston stapler but I kept my swing line stapler because yes, it didn't up as seen much my in, stapler. And I kept the stapler my stapler who's has my stapler right so this poor guy if you remember this movie is from Office Space it was kind of a great show uh, very entertaining uh, very much uh, a kick to the man but uh, I love this guy's character. He goes around the movie sort of oblivious to the fact that he's unemployed, and he continues to show up to work and wonder where his paycheck is. I think at the end of the movie, he's in the basement. Then, of course, he does burn the building down, so that's a whole different story. But, hey, this guy is unlike some other folks who are getting paychecks that are larger than their normal paychecks, and they've said, we don't want to go to work. So check this out. You're going to see a a pretty cool story that's at least starting to unfold here. If you offer, so this is Steve Mnuchin here who says, if you offer somebody their job back and they don't take it, you need to notify the unemployment office because they're no longer going to be allowed to get unemployment. And you know, we'll see where that thing goes because I think there's a few more rules to it than, than that. Uh, just like I'm not a, a, a supporter of these red flag laws, I'm not really a supporter of somebody just calling up and saying, hey, Larry didn't come to work today, cancel his unemployment. Um, there could be some extenuating circumstances, but the truth is about two-thirds of, of all people receiving unemployment right now are folks who are making more on unemployment than they made when they were, were working every day. So we have disincentivized folks intentionally. We wanted them to stay home for covid but now we've got to get them back out the doors. We've got to get them out into their workplace. We've got to get them working again. We've got to get them back to the old normal, and, or at least back to the new level of normal, which should include, should include work. You should have to work as part of your, your whatever the new way of life is going to be. So there are a large number of, of I, I guess, folks who are reaching out. We've had it happen here in one of my companies. We reach out to folks, and they say, well... I'm actually doing a little better. This makes me nervous. You know, I don't want to go out and catch COVID, and I'm high risk. You know, any anything you could imagine uh, that someone might say, and some of that, of course, is legitimate. Some of that is not going to be legitimate. You know how your friends are. You know you've got a group in your own friend group, and some of those people would be very sincere, and some of those people would be looking for, you know, any reason to to stay on the gravy train. So we're going to see what happens as you know, in the coming weeks, as we get back to work, and how do we really re-energize these folks uh, to take the pride and to say, "Man, I've got to, uh, I've got to work. I'm not going to live like an English lord. I, I really have to go to, uh, to do something every day, produce value, generate something. If we don't make something, there's nothing to to buy." If we don't, uh, if we don't buy things, we can't keep businesses open long term, and this whole bubble. You know, the whole thing we call government that's funded, by the way, from pieces of all those things you're making, uh, they, they need to get uh, back into the system, back into the pipeline, so that there can be tax revenue, so that in that previous story, we can make sure that uh, Californians still have, along with, uh, you know, New Yorkers and, and folks all around the country who have experienced this, uh, this big reduction. Now, th there's a risk. Okay, to my conservative audience, I want to just talk about this. There's a real risk in things going bad in California and New York, and that is all those people are going to go to these conservatively governed states and ruin them too. Because, let me tell you, they'll never connect the dots uh, with these failures being part of their supported policies or their... their um, socialist oligarchs who they've put in these these uh, you know high offices in these states these bureaucrats who've said I've got a good idea we could do this and we could do that and all we have to do is take you know a little more in taxes from this taxpayer 
All we have to do is, is get Mr. Business Owner to pay a little bit more, and everybody can have a Tesla. Everybody can have a cell phone. Everybody can have, can have, can have. But nobody thinks about what they have to give. So let's be careful before we, uh, before we do melt down California. It's good that we've got them kind of in a place together. So as long as you know California's got a, a, a spot, by the way, I know we've got folks in California who are not liberals. I know you haven't lost your mind. I know you, I'm, we've, we've seen you guys on the live feeds. We know that you're out there and you support conservative ideas. You support the Constitution. You support you know, a, a much more business-friendly, uh, hardworking American ideas, you know, apple pie, baseball, Chevrolet, hot dogs, all those things. So not everybody in California does that, not everybody in New York, but wow. You know, do we really want these folks spreading that to Florida, to Texas, to the different places where they're likely to settle? Because they're going to look for states that are doing it right. And it just so happens those states tend to be governed by conservatives and, and Republican governors right now. And when we see that, those numbers are close, right? It doesn't take a lot of liberals to go to Florida to throw that out of balance. Texas you know, Texas has been said to be a purple state now. We don't want that. We want to make sure we keep it a red state. So we need you guys to uh, close your borders, at least for a while, till after the election. Uh, I think we're coming up on those dates. I don't know. Maybe people now, Simon, they can't even register to vote in November. If you are a liberal watching this show, I just want an information, uh, you know, special announcement. Um, I think it's too late to register to vote um, unless you're registering in New York Chicago or, um, or, or, you know, parts of California that, uh, that we're going to go with. Trust me. Um, anyway, so, hey, we got to watch that. Now, listen, talk about a great story, great American story. So James Cash Penny, 118 years ago, builds a store. And it, this, this store, J.C. Penny, um, look, I bet there's not one person since it's been around the for 118 years who has not been in touch with, walked into many J.C. Pennies. I'll bet your parents may have taken you there to get a prom dress, uh, a suit, a tie, something for some special occasion. I know that's the way it was for me growing up. You know, I can I can hear my mom saying, "We're going to go to Pennies. We'll go to Pennies. We'll get this," and uh, it was always a thing. So uh, recently, J.C. Penney filed bankruptcy, and there's some uh, there's some breaking news afoot. Amazon is currently in talks uh, to take over J.C. Penney. I, I mean, that's at least the the uh, the guess. Uh, Amazon wants to to get better reach. There's 846 stores in J.C. Penney, and here's an opportunity that uh, we can have Jamazon. So there, uh, there could be a J.C. Penney, Amazon. We want to hear the names that you're thinking for J.C. Penney and Amazon to merge together and become something really special and cool. Where as soon as you walk in the store, they know what you wanted and hand it to you, right? So by the time you walk in, they're actually just giving it to you and you're swiping your your smart chip or something. So uh, this could be kind of a good a good news story for some of these. Uh, renters and malls where jc penny's an anchor store and they need to keep these places alive it has been very tough on malls on on the hard real estate side of uh of retail uh, over the last probably five ten years and it's just steadily each year we see the the in-store sales declining with online sales really going through the roof this could be a really interesting uh breakthrough I would wonder what that's going to do to people like Walmart and and some folks who who have that presence now. You know, Walmart was large enough to to stave off an Amazon assault and say, "Hey, we we can do all the same things that Amazon can do. We've got we've got buying power, we've got scale, we've got distribution channels." And uh, so pretty interesting to see what's going to happen there. And we want you to pay attention and and watch that. Now, speaking of pay attention, on last week, I was talking, hey, it was our goal to be by the end of the week, we wanted to be a thousand people, thousand followers, thousand subscribers on YouTube. This is like a benchmark. Let me tell you, a thousand, a thousand subscribers on YouTube 
is, I don't know, it's like getting your eye teeth in or something. It's really a big deal. And it is hard to do, and it's really hard to do when you're a conservative, political, mostly kind of conversationalist. Um, so we need you to go right now to Crawfordology on YouTube. There's going to be a link below. All you have to do is click that. It'll take you there. And we want you to like us and follow us and click the bell so that you can follow along. Um, we've only been doing this since January. Uh, and, and actually, believe it or not, we've only really been doing it, I think, on a steady basis for maybe two and a half, three months now. Uh, because I had some other competing things that were that were dragging me away in in, uh, in long periods of time, and then I don't know if you heard about this thing. There's, there's been this like quarantine going on, COVID nineteen something, Wuhan flu, Kung flu. There's all all sorts of cool names for it, but those things have been keeping us from it. And I know a few of you have not been able to raise your clicking finger to click on that YouTube channel, and here's your chance. <laughs> please, please. We, we need less than 100 folks to get us over the 1,000. Uh, we'd really love it if you'd just click in there and, and make a comment. So uh, really, please, take, take the 30 seconds to do it, and then come back. I'll wait. No, all right. Um, hey, so um, here, here is a, um, a really good news story, I think, with, uh, with Joe Rogan. So one of the things I really like about Joe Rogan is that, uh, you know, my well, I've got four sons, and and my sons kept saying, "Dad, you got to watch Joe Rogan. You got to watch Joe Rogan." And I was like, "Yeah, I know who Joe Rogan is. You know, MMA guy. I've watched him, and but he's got a lot of podcast, and you know, they were kind of taking me through. Dad, no, I think you'll like it. I think I think you'll find it interesting. So I'll tell you, for a long time, it's just timing. It was just hard to set down. And, and give Joe Rogan three hours a day, um, which I still don't do, by the way. But I do uh, love to tune in and hear, hear some, uh, some segments. And by the way, it's one of the reasons we're, we're going for more of a short-form podcast here because I know you guys are busy. We're giving you the breakdown on, on the things we're thinking about, the things hopefully you care about. Um, but today, I think it was today, right, that this announcement came out just a few minutes ago, actually. So um, that uh, he has struck a deal with Spotify. He's going to be leaving YouTube altogether so, um, and headed over to Spotify. Now, they estimate, um, I say they estimate, they estimate that uh, this deal is worth $100 million. So I just want to put the word out right now to Spotify. I'm actually willing to come for 99 Um you know, 99 mil, and I, I'm, I'll be there too. I'll be, in fact, we can, our two shows, I can like lead up to the Rogan show. Um, no, so a $100 million deal where he's going to retain all the creative rights. He's, he's clearly going to retain some other sort of incentive. Um, but what an exciting deal for a guy who built something from scratch and he's kind of grown this podcast channel. And really, this, this, uh, I, I think this whole idea of podcasts have been lifted up in some way by Joe Rogan because there's some notoriety that goes with uh, the, the comedy work, the MMA stuff, and he just has some really great guests that come on. So, um, you know, kudos, hats off to, uh, to Joe Rogan. And, you know, warning bell should be going off in, in the uh, YouTube headquarters saying, hey, we don't want Spotify to come and poach all of our best talent uh, from YouTube and drag them over to Spotify. So, you know, Spotify is running a pilot, uh, and I think this is all going to be done by the end of next year, right, 2021? So by the end of 2021, we're, we're, we're seeing him, him gone. And, oh, this year, 20, 20, the end of this year. So here's the other thing. He's going to take a couple of suitcases because... He's taking all of his videos off of YouTube and bringing them over to Spotify. Now, I'm pretty sure that it's not going to be Joe Rogan sitting it in his house tonight with the computer going, all right, here's season one, season two. It's not going to be like that. There's going to be somebody who's uh, on his staff who's going to be loading these dudes up and putting them in the uh, archive, but that archive is now going to live on Spotify. So, you know, hats off to Joe Rogan and... You can do this too, right? This is uh, this is something that just kind of demonstrates American entrepreneurial 
thinking and and the idea that you can go from just a concept with a fairly um, you know a fairly good plan and really great execution and you can find yourself setting on a hundred million dollar deal and I don't know how many years has Rogan been podcasting over ten yeah so so take about ten years build it up you know this kind of goes along with Malcolm Gladwell's uh, thinking I think that uh, you get out there and you become an expert you become the maestro of podcasting and it's gonna pay off so here's a uh, here's a big payoff moment for Joe so really hats off to you okay so listen last thought of the day and it's the most important thought for me for me go to YouTube subscribe here subscribe there see us on Instagram find us on Twitter I think we're everywhere I think I'm surprised you haven't run into me and accidentally subscribed so if you haven't do it today take care and be well